Good morning or evening, everybody, depending on where you're at. Uh, so as you know, last week, we kind of started to set up the hardware. We built out the uh, ultrasonic sensor with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and this week, what we're going to do is, is actually take those readings and now uh, in a pretty straightforward approach, we're going to extend those to uh, a messaging infrastructure, specifically leveraging Eclipse Mosquito and MQTT. Uh, but so before we begin, as typical, you know, the the common disclaimer, uh, you know, I don't think we need to go through that again, other than just, you know, be aware that uh, any future looking statements at this point are uh, subjective. I think, you know, that's just the statement of reality for all of us in, in the world today. Um, again, some background. My name is Bill McLean. I am the messaging evangelist here at TIBCO. Uh, I've been working with TIBCO's communications and messaging infrastructure for about 20 years now. Uh, and have been uh, one of the lead architects and developers for some of the products like TIPCO SmartSockets, EMS, FTL. I've worked on all of them within the TIPCO infrastructure. So today, what are we going to do with regards to our sensor? Uh, and the specific area that I wanted to look at was if, if you remember last week, we talked about essentially taking that sensor, building that sensor out, and then using Raspberry Sump to use that sensor to get a reading of the water level within a, a given, uh, basically, a sump pit. Now, that's great, that works really well. It wrote uh, essentially those sensor readings every time you called the, our sump a Python script, it would write those to a comma separated value uh, on the Raspberry Pi so that you could see what those values were. Uh, with that, you can actually chart those and graph those. But ultimately, I'd love to be able to take this and use it for more of a real time operation. Um, so within the Raspberry Sump operations, you have the ability to do alerting and via email. But I would love the ability to take this and actually provide real time charting uh, and access that data anywhere, anytime. Uh, and the first layer to that is really to IoT enable the sensor with something like Eclipse Mosquito. Um, what you're going to be seeing me use today is actually going to, is directly from our community edition of our Eclipse Mosquito support. So you can go to products, typical messaging and downloads. You can access that and download that for free on, uh, from that site. And you can start to leverage Eclipse Mosquito uh, from Tibco's uh, community edition directly uh, as a part of this uh, tutorial. The other thing that we are going to do is actually install uh, the Raspberry Pi version of the Eclipse Mosquito or specifically the MQTT clients, uh, the PAHO clients, to allow us to access MQTT directly on the sensor itself. Um, and that's essentially done through a process of uh, installing that through uh, PIP3. Now, I'm not going to walk through the installation here today because what I really want to do is walk us through how we actually enable the Raspberry Sump code pretty uh, easily to leverage uh, MQTT as a communications uh, distribution platform. So what we're going to do is basically we're going to introduce a new function into the logging uh, piece of the Raspberry Sump code. Uh, it's not very complicated. It's not a lot of code at all. It's, it's really a straightforward process. We're going to import the client uh, code for PAHO and treat that as MQTT. And then we're going to define a new logging function that I'm going to call log under bar MQTT, which is going to take the exact same readings from the uh, typical logging function that was writing to CSV. And it's going to use those and send those via Eclipse Mosquito so that then we can consume those with an Eclipse Mosquito subscriber. Uh, so a couple of things to highlight, and I'm going to jump in and actually do this here in a second is the client connect code, which you see uh, below the client equals mqtt.client. That's connecting to uh, my uh, server here that's actually running on my laptop. Uh, and then we're going to publish these messages to a topic that we have called MQTT sump sensor. That's pretty much all we have to do to enable this to send and receive data into uh, MQTT and Eclipse Mosquito. The other thing we do have to do is, is when we actually take that reading, if you notice, we're going to make a modification to the reading py function, uh, 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 sorry, file. And currently that log.log under bar reading water depth is what is writing that information to the CSV file. We're going to just add a separate a log to log that same water depth to MQTT. So 
I think there's enough talking about this. Let's uh, see how we can do with this and actually start to look at implementing this. So give me just a second here. Let me go ahead and share this screen here. So, all right. So what you should be seeing in front of you is actually four terminal windows. Uh, and you should see over up here on the right hand side, this is my Eclipse Mosquito uh, server that's basically been started on my laptop. I'm also going to start an Eclipse Mosquito subscriber over here. Um, and I'll, just to give you some background on this, I'm simply starting this Eclipse Mosquito subscriber. I'm connecting to this server on my local laptop with this IP address, with this port. And then I'm subscribing to the topic MQTT sump sensor, which we uh, described earlier. So that's the piece to get the Eclipse Mosquito site running. Now what we have to do is actually look at changing those modifications to this Raspberry Sump code to implement the Mosquito distribution as part of that reading. So let's go ahead. Um, all of this code when it's installed is in user local uh, lib Python 3.7, distributed packages under Raspberry Sump. Um, so I'm going to make a couple of changes here in real time. So you never, you never know how well this is going to work, uh, especially because, you know, I, uh, I, you know, my typing is sometimes not the, the best. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what we said in the uh, setup before. I'm going to create a function called log MQTT water depth. All right. And I'm just going to do some quick copy and pasting here. So let's pull this down. Let's do these two lines here because we're going to functionally keep it the same. And then what we're going to do is create a message for this. And we're going to take the time of reading. And we're going to add that to the string of the water depth. So that is going to create the message that we're going to send into Eclipse Mosquito. Then I'm going to create a client. I'm going to call that MQTT client. Just create that client directly. I'm going to connect that client to my broker, uh, my Eclipse Mosquito broker at 192.1.0.79 on port uh, 1883 with a timeout of 60. And I got a typo already in there. Glad I caught that. And then we're going to client publish the to the MQTT sump sensor topic. And we're going to send that message. And then we're going to disconnect the client. All right, so that's the, the log MQTT function. I also have to go back up here and make sure I import my paho.mqtt client as MQTT. Uh, and that should be all we need for that logging function. Uh, the other thing, as I said, we're going to go in and do is actually uh, add to the readings uh, to the water depth piece of this. We're going to go down to the bottom. Uh, we're going to take this same function. And we're going to change that log to MQTT. All right. So with that, we should now be able to take all of this and run these messages and create a call that our sump.py. And uh, there's my typo. Knew it was going to happen. Give me just a second here. Import reading. Just got a little overzealous with the returns. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so that's going to create that that R sump. And if you notice, when we do that, we get our reading actually over here as part of our mosquito subscriber. So at 11:10 my time, at 22 seconds, I got a reading of 62.0. 
Uh, so one of the things I did over here, if you'll notice in this bottom window, is, is I actually have a 10 second check uh, script that I wrote that's basically going to call out and create, uh, call the water level checks on account. Uh, and you'll see that essentially every 10 seconds it's going to create uh, a message and send that to my Eclipse Mosquito window uh, subscriber over here. Uh, so every time it calls, it's going to do that reading, it's writing it to the CSV file, and then it's ultimately sending it to uh, my uh, Eclipse Mosquito edition. Uh, I'm going to play around here with my setting a little bit, and you'll, you should see, see some, uh, I just moved kind of the thing I'm using, so changing functionally the water depth, so you can see that I moved that a little bit further away, so the water depth went down. If I move it a little bit further up, you should be able to see that the water level will go up uh, a little bit. So it's all basically taking real-time information from the sensor itself and sending that to my Eclipse Mosquito subscriber. So that's really how easy it is to take and leverage something like a messaging infrastructure to provide you with the ability to distribute data uh, to multiple different applications and implement those applications to simply publish or subscribe data for IoT enablement. Uh, MTTT is a great tool to do this. It has a lot of flexibility in this area. And that really is the foundation for allowing for data distribution to occur for things like sensors and pieces within a larger scale infrastructure. Now, one of the things that we now want to look at, though, is really that aspect of taking it to the next level. Um, so being able to take this whole situation, this whole solution now, and use this to move to the next level, which is specifically going to be the ability to extend this to other messaging components. Specifically, if we wanted to look at how do we take something like MQTT in my existing infrastructure, running on my laptop, running on Raspberry Pi sensors here within my house, and extend that to an environment that allows me to send that data to anywhere, anytime via cloud messaging, like something like Tipco Cloud Messaging. Um, and so that's what we're going to do next week is actually take this as the next step is, is now that I've enabled this for MQTT, how I can leverage other Tipco messaging components to seamlessly extend this communication to cloud, web, and mobile types of applications by just simply connecting those components together. So I look forward to talking to you guys next week on that.